I'm using Logic Pro, a digital audio workstation by Apple. It's a virtual recording studio. Up here we have instruments as seen by their different sound waves, and below we have MIDI tracks. And that's where I want to start. A MIDI track has information about notes, what the pitch is, how loud or what's the velocity, where it is in the timeline, and the duration of the note. This particular recording is 93 beats per minute, and we look at this note here, and we see it's an E note at measure 3. It's very similar to a player piano. If I press play, you'll hear these two notes, E and G sharp. I can add a note, make it louder, What I'd like to do is take this MIDI data and use it to create Beat Saber blocks and what direction their intended swipes are. So I create a MIDI channel and monitor it with an application I wrote. This represents a grid of where the blocks appear and the intended direction of their swipe. So for every note placed, there is a corresponding block and direction. This note right here represents the bottom left cube. Now if I move it up, you see it places itself. This F sharp 1 in the MIDI channel is showing up in the panel, right here. I'll click and drag to place another note right after it, and then I'll hit play. You see it hits twice but I want it to actually be a red box on the left. So I change the pitch by dragging the note up, and you see it updating on the monitor on the right. Now I don't want it to be an all hit, I want it to be a down hit. So I change the velocity of the note to get the direction I want. Now I'll do the same for the other cube. I'll change the velocity till I have the data I need to make it a down hit. Okay, so let's check this. Great. So when we're done here, I'll take the data from this MIDI information and use it to create the data used by the Beat Saber song to place the blocks. But I'm also going to use the audio from this song. So what I'd like to do now is just create a rough approximate mix of all the levels. This particular track is something I wrote for Arnold Communications for a Volkswagen Jetta ad many, many years ago. I'm going to loop the session and then mix some of the levels to where I think they're going to be fine for now. Ultimately, the final recording will be the one I use for the actual Beat Saber track itself. Now this particular sound, I call it Morse code because it makes me think of Morse code. I want to have some really specific hits in Beat Saber, so I can program my hits in the MIDI to match up the sound waves in this particular track. Okay, that's just an approximate mix, but it'll work for now. Now, I want to have an interesting opening, and the great thing I found about this approach is I can change the arrangement of a song and also change the arrangement of the Beat Saber actions that I want to occur. So if I want to do a more interesting opening, that sets up the player to know that blocks are coming, and that's what I'm going to do.
So I'm going to put the violin hit on a separate track with a quarter note delay. We created a two measure space so the player can get ready before the first block comes. Now we can edit our MIDI data and make sure that the block happens right on the downbeat. Let's review the sequence in the monitor to see what this feels like. At this point, what I'd like to do is actually perform what I want for notes on the keyboard. So just by hitting these keys, I can trigger the blocks. What I'll do is play along to the song and hit all the spots where I want the rhythmic placement of the block. Then I'll go back and change the direction of the block's arrow, adjusting by velocity. So with your eagle eye, you probably noticed at measure 18, I screwed up the comeback on the drop beat, but here's an opportunity to fix that. An advantage of creating in this manner is I can use Logic Pro to quantize all the beats and ensure that any hit I made while performing is exactly in time with the rhythm. So let's have a quick review about what we just did and then think about the directions we want to change for the hits. For starters, I'm going to change all of the notes so they're pointing down as a default direction. So I do that by selecting them all and then setting all their velocities to the number, which I think is like 15. That's the arrow down value. So right there, we have two notes that are both in the down direction. And let's see. Yeah, so what it would make sense is if the second note, instead of going down, was up. It'll be a more natural movement. So you strike down, and then right afterward you strike back up. I'll do the same for this one as well. Now because I was actually performing along with the track, I was intentionally laying back wherever the violin hits were. And I think the same thing here, we'll make these up hits. Here we have a fast consecutive group of hits. And physically, that would be pretty hard to do one right after the other. So 
So what I'll do is make the first one a strike up. The second one is already a strike down. And the third one, I'll make a strike up. And I'll take out this little mistake. And we come into another pattern like we had before. So we'll do another up, down, up. In music, when you have a repeating idea, sometimes you call it a motif. And we're starting to see that with some of the Beat Saber actions. Repeating ideas. And for the last one, we'll have them hit at the same time, same direction. Something kind of final feeling. Now this setup isn't just for notes. It's also possible to position blocks and bombs. And let me show you what one of the bombs looks like. These are meant to be obstacles as you're playing. There, there we go. There's a couple of bombs on the bottom row. And if I move that higher, I can give you an idea of what a block looks like. Now you're supposed to get out of the way when you see a block or a bomb. They're, they're meant to keep you moving and, and crouching and ducking and it can make it really quite fun. So I'm going to place a couple. And you'll start to get the idea of, of how they work and what their intent is. Because the blocks are controlled by notes as well, we can set the duration for how long they're in play. Now I'll put a block barrier on the other side, create a little movement right to left. So there's still more to do and watching me do this can get a little monotonous. I'll keep going and show you the final result, but I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did experimenting with the idea. And this monitor plug I created was, was not that hard to do. It only took a few hours. As you could see, I was able to revise the choreography of the game, but also go in the other direction and revise the music supporting it. So there was a, a tighter coupling in the creative process. There are other tools for creating Beat Saber tracks out there for sure, but this approach really sparked my imagination around what's possible. I'm curious to try this with non-obvious Beat Saber music tracks, like modern classical minimalists like Steve Reich or Philip Glass, or more poetry tracks like Wall Stevens or The Last Poets. So it'll get weird, but weird's fun. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.